So here we are again talking about this pandemic and the Great Barrington Declaration. Um, I note with great interest that Matt Hancock has launched a bit of an attack against the concept of herd immunity and this whole Great Barrington Declaration. If you look at the signatures now, we're up to almost 600,000 concerned citizens and almost 31,000 medical practitioners, so it's definitely gaining traction despite what the critics might say about this particular movement. So this whole thing got me thinking about how politicians like to think that they know better than the experts and it took me back to 2003 in the Gulf War II situation. So if you cast your mind back to sort of 2002, 2003, you will remember how the politicians at the time made a concerted effort for people to buy into their side of the story, into their side of the facts. And, um, you know, in hindsight, you look back and we knew they were all talking nonsense. It was all a pack of lies. And I do think that there is an analogous situation in 2020 with this pandemic. As always, these things are never apparent at the time. You know, in, when we're in the thick of it, we almost buy into what the politicians are telling us. It's only with the benefit of hindsight when we look back and we realize we've been lied to. So instead of me doing the talking, I'll turn over to Tony Blair who can explain the situation far more better than I can to Iraq at all, but there is no doubt that Iraq poses a threat in respect to weapons of mass destruction, and there is no doubt that this issue is an issue that should be dealt with. There is no doubt at all the United Nations resolutions that Saddam is in breach of are there for a purpose. He is, without any question, still trying to develop that chemical, biological, potentially nuclear capability, and to allow him to do so without any let or hindrance, just to say we can carry on and do it, I think would be irresponsible. Look, I would never support anything I thought was wrong out of some blind loyalty to the US. To allow Saddam to use the weapons he has or to get the weapons he wants would be an act of gross irresponsibility and we should not and we must not countenance it. I am quite sure, I think most people are, that he has these weapons and that the people in the documentation exist to show that. And the truth is, this issue of weapons of mass destruction is a real threat to the world. I believe, incidentally, that it is only a matter of time before it is linked with international terrorism. Can we be sure that terrorism and weapons of mass destruction will join together? Let us say one thing. If we are wrong, we will have destroyed a threat that at its least is responsible for inhuman carnage and suffering. That is something I am confident history will forgive. You know, there's always been something bizarre about the notion that Saddam never had any weapons of mass destruction. I mean, we had a 12-year history with the UN for a reason. As I've said constantly to you, I believe the intelligence we received is correct. So you've heard it there straight from the horse's mouth. So fast forward 17 years and now we've got Matt Hancock taking on all the the signatories of the Great Barrington Declaration or the experts in their respective fields because this guy here thinks he knows better. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn over to Matt Hancock and hear what this guy's got to say. Set out this more relaxed approach, including in the so-called Great Barrington Declaration. And I want to take this argument head on because on the substance, the Great Barrington Declaration is underpinned by two central claims, and both are emphatically false. First, it says that if enough people get COVID, we will reach herd immunity. This is not true. Many infectious diseases never reach herd immunity, like measles and malaria and AIDS and flu. And with increasing evidence of reinfection, we should have no confidence that we would ever reach herd immunity to COVID, even if everyone caught it. Herd immunity is a flawed goal without a vaccine, even if we could get to it, which we can't. So here we are again, 
I mean, it's just crazy. It's a crazy situation. It's hard to believe once again that we've got these politicians who think they know better than these experts. And we all knew how it ended after the Gulf War too. It was an absolute disaster. And we all know how it's going to end this time. You've got these politicians who are just overruling these epidemiological experts. And it's just it's just crazy. So I'm pretty confident that in the next few years we will look back and see once again that the same mistakes were made and the politicians have got us into a huge mess and it's just the same old, same old. History repeats itself. What can we do about it? Not a lot by the looks of things. ...to Iraq at all, but there is no doubt that Iraq poses a threat in respect of weapons of mass destruction, and there is no doubt that this issue is an issue that should be dealt with. There is no doubt at all the United Nations resolutions that Saddam is in breach of are there for a purpose. He is, without any question, still trying to develop that chemical, biological, potentially nuclear capability, and... To allow him to do so without any let or hindrance, just to say we can carry on and do it, I think would be irresponsible. Look, I would never support anything I thought was wrong out of some blind loyalty. To ...set out this more relaxed approach, including in the so-called Great Barrington Declaration. And I want to take this argument head on, because on the substance, the Great Barrington Declaration is underpinned by two central claims, and both are emphatically false. First, it says that if enough people get COVID, we will reach herd immunity. This is not true. Many infectious diseases never reach herd immunity, like measles and malaria and AIDS and flu. And with increasing evidence of reinfection, we should have no confidence that we would ever reach herd immunity to COVID, even if everyone caught it. Herd immunity is a flawed goal without a vaccine, even if we could get to it, which we can't.